Tilburg University offers a global management of social issues, GMSI for short. Well, what do they do at GMSI, in the GMSI program? They talk about wicked problems, for instance, poverty, climate change, migration. Uh, but we want to know a little bit more about the insights of this program. So we invited three people on the table. And the three people are, first, Dr. Jörg Raab. He is from Germany, and he is the Associate Professor of the Department of Organizational Studies, and also the Educational Director of the GMSI program. So he knows a lot about it, and his field of expertise is governance and the effectiveness of networks. Second, we have Simina Perfi. She's a 21-year-old second year GMSI student and she was born in Romania but did her international high school in The Hague and she's a very active student, not only a member of the association of the MUN Tilburg but also she does the Outreaching Honors program. And then last but not least, we have Rodri Rodrigo Reyes. He is from Peru and, you, well, he basically studied all over the globe. He went from uh, Lima to Warsaw and now studying in Tilburg. But you also worked in New York and Manchester, so he's got a very international perspective on the program. And, um, well, first question, Rodrigo, what is it like to study here in Tilburg? Because you've seen New York, which is, of course, different from Tilburg. Oh well, yeah, it's, it's much, much more different. I think that, well, just comparing the size, Tilburg is much more like a village, but it's, it's, it's great. It's great because you can go anywhere by bike. And um, I don't know, it, it, it feels more familiar. Yeah. So uh, but you've, you've lived in uh, the Netherlands longer because you did an international school in The Hague. Uh, wh so why did you choose for GMSI? Why did you come to Tilburg? Well, I liked the, pro the program the most, and I liked how it combined um, sociology and HR and organization studies together while still talking about wicked problems. So the different perspectives, let's look into that in, in a minute. But first, it, you mentioned wicked problems. You're the doctor at the table, you're the professor. <laughs> what is a wicked problem? What well, do you guys discuss in class? Well, a wicked problem is a, a sort of a special type of organizational policy problem, one that is characterized by a high complexity. So the different parts of the problem are interconnected in a way that we usually have a hard time to understand uh, by high uncertainty. Um, so uncertainty about the knowledge base, uh, what are actually the reasons of a problem, uh, but also if we intervene, what will happen. Uh, and third, by what we call value divergence. So um, parties or people that are connected to the problem, um, they differ in their values and how they perceive the problem. And uh, examples are poverty, migration, climate change, for example. Very big problems. I guess there is more within the GMSI program than wicked problems. What, what are, are the other things that you do? Well, as Semina said before, uh, there are basically three uh, uh, social science disciplines. Uh, that is uh, sociology, uh, human resource studies, and organization studies. But the students also uh, have four courses in methods and statistics uh, because we believe that before we can talk about solving or coping with wicked problems, we first have to understand them quite well. So data collection and analysis is important. Uh, and then we have uh, courses on economics, on international law, on project management, uh, and also uh, uh, philosophical perspectives so the colleagues from the uh, uh, School of Humanities are also involved in the program. So this is a very diverse program, very, yeah. um, very different issues are being spoken about. So um, Jörg, the GMSI program, um, it's a three-year bachelor, yeah. but how is it structured? Where, where, where do new students begin? Yeah. Well, we basically have two principles in structuring the program. First, uh, basically according to the year, so year one, year two, year three. Mm -hmm. uh, so year one is introduction. Uh, and if you look at the program, you'll find a lot of introduction courses also. Introduction, For instance? Introduction to economics, introduction to sociology, uh, the Wicked Problems 101. Mm -hmm. um, then year two is, uh, is application um, and deepening. Uh, and uh, basically year three brings everything together, um, also in terms of application, uh, but also then the um, mobility window and the uh, bachelor thesis, uh, where students uh, write uh, a research piece uh, on a topic they are interested in. Mm -hmm. And then we have sort of uh, so-called learning lines, uh, so they are subject uh, uh, driven, so there's a learning line of course on wicked problems, uh, then there's a, a learning line on uh, methods and statistics, uh, and we have also a, a learning line on academic and uh, research skills, and one sort of more the management and organization uh, questions. So basically the different 
pillars of the GMSI program. Exactly. Okay. And we heard a couple of examples of the first year courses, but second year courses, Simina, what, what, what kind of courses have you got in the second year? Um, international organizations, a lot of statistics, the questionnaires, how to structure a questionnaire, statistics. So to prepare More yourself for the bachelor thesis. Yes. 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 And what's your favorite second year uh, course? Um, international international organizations. International organizations. And what do you learn in international organizations? Uh, we had an insight of most international organizations, like the UN, European Union, regional um, organizations, and we learn how they function and how to interact. Well, yes. Yeah, w we really try to sort of uh, have a variation of, let's say, uh, teaching methods uh, and, uh, uh, and conversations, group work. Uh, for example, we also have uh, in uh, advanced project management, which is a second year course, mm -hmm. we have uh, a one day simulation of a uh, natural disaster in the, in the Pacific on an island uh, that was developed by uh, a colleague that has worked in uh, humanitarian interventions uh, for so quite like a uh, flooding or earthquake. It or was a, a flooding. Uh, okay. um, and uh, so students really, uh, they take on roles of uh, uh, the Red Cross or ambassadors or uh, different administrators or other NGOs. And for a day, they have to really go through cool. uh, uh, the chaos and how you first get organized and you know get the get the response going. Um, or uh, uh, Semina talked about the course international organization. So we went to the Hague, to the International Criminal Court, and to the Peace Palace, and also to Brussels, to NATO, and the EU. So we try to uh, not only sit in the classroom and have lectures uh, and basically have sort of a one-way street, but um, um, that's also part huh, because it creates the basis. But then uh, the interaction and different experiences, different learning styles. Uh, that's transcends the, the classroom. You, exactly. You see other things as well. Rodrigo, you're also involved with the uh, Transform Tilburg movement, if I may say so. Uh, well, that's an example of really doing something. So how does that work? What do you do? Well, uh, the objective of, the, of, the, of this, well, I don't think we're an organization right now, but we are more of a community. We have a group of people that is trying to get different organizations that work in Tilburg or in Brabant uh, together to work in a more cooperative, cooperative way. Because we believe that, or what we are taught is also, that wicked problems you cannot tackle them by yourself. You're usually tackling the problems within the system and you need cooperation for that. You need to manage or you need to link different stakeholders to actually make a change. And that's really something that you can do well, you know, not sit behind the desk and really change something. Exactly. I think that is, it is a good way of actually getting yourself to do something about it. Get, perhaps being, uh, being part of something bigger than yourself. Nice. Yeah. And Simina, what's your favorite course then? What's the, um, yeah, what attracts you most? I think international law. Um, before starting it, I was like, oh, I don't want to study international law. Oh my god, it would be so much work. But um, it was so nice. It was my favorite subject. Your favorite, and why? What's what's so um, interesting on international law? Well, after, throughout, like while studying it, but also after, I realized that everything starts with law. That you can do things in the world, but you also need law at the same time. Um, GMSI, what, what would you say is the best characteristic of the GMSI program? Well, the best characteristic, I think, is uh, that it combines a broad social science perspective uh, uh, with um, very, um, uh, pressing uh, subjects uh, uh, like the wicked problems and it's in an international context uh, so we look at this from an international perspective but also the classroom is international so in the first two cohorts we had uh, about 21 different countries uh, each cohort uh, majority of students of course is from Europe and we are in a European university uh, but uh, we also have students from North America uh, South America uh, and Africa and Asia Nice. And what's, what's the main benefit of all these different nationalities in one classroom for you, Rodrigo? What? Well, you get different perspectives. I mean, you get different stories from people who have encountered these wicked problems in a different way, perhaps. So, I don't know, for example, I come from a developing country and you can share thoughts about it or you can actually get different perspectives of, for example, poverty. And the different mm -hmm. nationalities help you with all these exactly. different perspectives. Because everyone comes from a different background. And I think that it's, it's very valu valuable because in the classes you have people who can actually say something different about the subject that is being uh, discussed. Yeah. 
And um, we talked about change, of course, and really doing something uh, about it, the, the most parts that you love. But, of course, it is a scientific uh, program. So, Simina, what do you like about statistics and mathematics? Um, and well, statistics is not my favorite, but um, it's okay, it's doable. Yeah, you, you need, of course. Yeah. Uh, how, how do you need this? What, how, do you, how do you combine the scientific part of this program with, uh, with the sociology part of it? Well, we always have to write papers, and that's where you really see how everything comes together. Because, yes, you can say that certain, you can analyze the problem, and you can say that this academic, things like that. But you also need statistics to support your arguments, always. So real facts, yeah. real data to show that things work or don't work. Mm -hmm. Okay. And what, what, can you name an example of, of such a, a research thing that you've done? Well, uh, we just did a research paper on how um, the education level of s somebody's education level has an influence on the way they accept migrants in the country. And we did look at, at past papers and other theories, but we needed to also carry out research. So we used the um, environmental survey system and we took questions from there and we did the SPSS and statistics. SPSS, it's your everybody's favorite program, <laughs> right? Yes. Well, it's not as scary as it looks. Okay, well, yeah. you learn all about SPSS <laughs> once, you've, once you've come here. And, and, and Simia, just a short uh, on the honors program, because yeah. you're, you're doing the honors program. Uh, so it means that within the GMSI program, you can do some side steps. Yeah. What, what is the honors program? Uh, well, there are about three honors program, but I, I'm doing the outreaching one, and that's basically focused on personal development. And it's also a more of an active program where we have to do, where we have to have community projects and we have to start up um, certain organizations or groups and we have to do master classes. It's really interesting. So, so the, uh, the honors programs are offered by Tilburg University as a whole huh? and students then, if they fulfill certain conditions, they can participate in them. So okay. even if you have a, a different program, you can also participate in the honors program. But that also is interesting because you meet students from other disciplines there. Yeah. So you, you work together like with most, people yeah. from uh, the Global uh, Law School of Economics. economics yeah. Okay, oh, very nice. It's so it's a very diverse program, we mm -hmm. can say, the GMSI program, and with a lot of possibilities of really doing something. Um, is there also something that you guys would like to improve on the program because here's the educational <laughs> director Bring and it on. if you if you want to change something what would it be what would you say yeah. you would like to change uh, maybe less statistics <laughs> <laughs> less SPSS yeah. less SPSS I understand where they're coming from but uh, yeah I wouldn't mind if there would be less <laughs> is it a possibility to do uh, less statistics no. or is it just a necessity? <laughs> <laughs> That's just a necessity. I mean, the program is, is also, uh, it's a bachelor program, so it's a, it's a broad introduction to the social sciences and we believe that uh, uh, if you want to become a uh, well-trained social scientist, mm -hmm. uh, a, a good package of uh, methods and statistics is necessary. Also, because we want our graduates to have the chance to really go on to very good international master's programs. And then usually uh, the, the admissions requirements where students have problems with are methods and statistics because that's not so easy to catch up on. Uh, other courses, uh, they're relatively easy maybe to, to take. But once you have a good basis in methods and statistics, uh, it's much easier to get also in good uh, international master's programs. I can see a little bit of disappointment <laughs> in your eyes. Okay. I needed the rest of my life. Uh, as an ed educational director, is there something you seek in students? Or would you like to change something about the well, students? Well, I think uh, uh, our expectations are, I think, met to a large extent. Huh? So I want students that, that are very much aware of what's going on around them. Um, I want them to be engaged, mm -hmm. huh? uh, have broadly interested. Um, um, what, what we noticed is that um, uh, many of the students also f with an international background, they are very strong in, in sort of discussing issues, uh, but uh, um, they and we still have to r sort of work on their writing skills. Uh, but that's also what the program is for. I mean, uh, uh, that's something that, uh, you know, uh, many students from around the world maybe have not been trained so much in their schools. Uh, and that is something that we also add in terms of uh, professional and academic skills. And the possibilities the are there to improve, for instance, the writing. Yeah. I see you nodding, yeah? Yeah, we have an ACBA, uh, two ACBA seminars. It's uh, academic and... Skills. Academic and writing skills. Okay. Yeah. 
So you learn how to code, you learn how to actually put your thoughts in paper because that's, sometimes it can be problematic. But we, we, we get them. And we also get feedback from the, from the professors. Nice. Is there, one, uh, is there a question you'd like to ask to the students with, uh, with regard to the GMSI program? Is there something you'd like to know from them? Maybe uh, uh, one question is, you know, in terms of, uh, we also have a mobility window. Uh, in mm -hmm. the third year, students can choose either an internship, study abroad, or a minor here or in the Netherlands. So, uh, um, Semina is going to Milan uh, in the fall. Uh, and, uh, and, and what are you going to do in Milan? Study. <laughs> and what, what, what are you going to study? <laughs> well, I want to do a master in policy making, so I chose a lot of courses regarding, yeah, okay. regarding policy. Policy. And uh, Rodrigo, are you already, uh, do you know what you're going to do in the mobility window? Well, I don't know for sure, but <laughs> <laughs> I do have a plan. I, I, I want to do a, um, a minor in ethics. Mm -hmm. And, well, yeah, it's, I think that, uh, for example, in Wicked Problems, in the first course that we get, uh, we have a, a part of philosophy and epistemology. And, well, yeah, I, 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 that drew me a lot. So actually, yeah, that, that is very, very appealing to me. Yes. Actually, applying reasoning to, well, anything, or uh, applying reasoning to, for example, support, support certain actions. I don't know if, if, if that's too abstract. Uh, I guess uh, you learn a lot of it in the minor that you're going to study. Yeah. So, uh, so it's because I would like to, I, I have seen the possibility of doing a master in applied ethics, for example, because I'm very concerned of, okay, if what organizations do or what multinational organizations do can, you sh can sometimes be uh, ethically uh, disputed mm -hmm. or it's, it's just plain unethical. I think it's a whole new wicked problem you're, uh, you're putting <laughs> on the table now. So let's not go into yeah. deep, but so a minor I, you're going to I do. What I basically wanted to ask, yes, that's exactly. how we started, is uh, you know, we have this mobility window and I as a director perceive this as a great opportunity uh, for students mm -hmm. to also build their personal profile, mm -hmm. uh, as Rodrigo just said. But do you perceive it like that as well or is it like an additional burden because it also asks you know, some organizational and some thinking and a lot of decisions? I think See it's it. the fun part, because now I know Tilburg by heart, and now I get to explore another university, another culture. So I think that's that's the fun part at the end of the year. Rodrigo, <laughs> yeah, I, I I completely agree with her. It's uh, I think that it, it gives you great opportunity to actually do whatever you do. want with yeah. with uh, and preparing yourself to either go in the labor market or follow another master, and you get a lot of of options. Yeah, what that's you true. Want to. So, um, in one sentence, why should viewers come to Tilburg and study the GMSI program? Yeah. Well, I think it's a, a unique program, uh, not only in the Netherlands but also internationally, because we combine sociology, uh, human resource studies, and organization studies. So it's basically uh, organizing for wicked problems. So we do both. We have more a um, macro perspective uh, on s some of these policy issues, but then also especially on, you know, how do you run these projects? Huh? If you if you uh, uh, basically tackle uh, the refugee crisis, I mean, what organizations do you need? How do they have to work together? How do you make a project plan? Uh, so uh, I think that is a unique uh, perspective and the international context uh, that students uh, study here. Uh, I think these are two uh, uh, unique uh, uh, characteristics that make it worthwhile coming here. Unique selling points. Simina? Um, I think if they care about the world, they should come to Stilberg and you'll be the best three years of their life, I think. The best three years, yeah. of, three years of your life, nice. Rodrigo, why should people come here? Uh, I would say because of the diversity. The fact that you get these different perspectives makes you doubt about you, what you hold through, but that's good because yeah, you actually engage in discussion and, and get all these different views and from different nationalities. It's actually a very, very uh, nice exercise, very fun. Thank you. A short insight in the GMSI program, Global Management of Social Issues. Thank you very much for watching. Thank you very much for your insights at the table and uh, good luck with the studies, of course. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So, wasn't it?